Rush would play their first show in America in May of 1974, and from start to finish, it was an absolute disaster. Following the show, new laws had to be passed to better control concerts, and the promoter would lose his shirt declaring bankruptcy. On top of that, several fans would end up in the hospital due to drug overdoses. Today, let's explore what happened. The Northside Drive-In near Lansing, Michigan would host the state's version of Woodstock. Advertised as a 12-hour festival, it would be headlined by Dr. John, who would appear alongside an up-and-coming Canadian band named Rush. It would be Rush's first American show, and also on the bill was a Beatles cover band and a group called Cosmic Beam Experience, which as the name suggested, was a light show. Organizers expected upwards of 30,000 people to attend the festival, and it was going to be so grandiose that a documentary would be made chronicling the event. Ahead of the festival though, residents voiced their concern to both festival organizers and the municipal government with almost a hundred members of the public inquiring about issues such as traffic safety, noise, and other logistics. The concerned citizens even attempted to get an injunction against the event, but it failed. Bruce Angel, a former police chief who was the head of security for the event, was quoted by the Clinton County News as telling the concerned citizens, and I quote, I don't think this is going to be like the Huns coming in. While 6,000 tickets were sold, estimates varied about how many people actually attended. I've seen estimates range from 1,300 to 2,000 people. The low attendance could be mostly blamed on inclement weather. To make matters worse, the headliner Dr. John failed to show up after concert organizers couldn't meet his demands. The Lansing State Journal in 2010 interviewed promoter Tom Demeter, who stated, and I quote, he had all these ridiculous rules in place. He requested to be flown in by helicopter and stuff like that. We obviously couldn't meet those demands and it became apparent he wasn't coming. In the same interview, Demeter would also admit that back in those days, if musicians wanted to get out of a concert, they would simply make ridiculous demands that couldn't be met, and that's exactly what happened in this case. The New York Dolls would end up replacing Dr. John as a headliner, and the audience weren't really fans of every group on the bill, with Demeter revealing in the same interview how the crowd turned on Cosmic Beam Experience, saying, and I quote, I remember looking up at the sky and seeing beer bottles being thrown towards the stage. The crowd that night were not ones of peace-loving hippies, he'd say. The same article also interviewed a student who was hired by a non-profit group to film the festival for Detroit Public Access Television, who claimed he couldn't film the New York Dolls because at that point in time they were under a recording contract. Turning now to Rush, at this point in time the band hadn't signed to Mercury Records and Neil Peart hadn't yet joined the band. Instead John Rutsey was the drummer and there wasn't actually much written about the band's performance with the exception of one attendee saying and I quote, all I remember is there was a lot of hair, with another attendee simply remembering, and I quote, it was loud. No set list exists from that concert, and for years it was debated online exactly what Rush's first American concert was. News reports following the failed festival focused little on the musical acts and more on the four drug overdoses that happened with one victim being a 16-year-old boy. Thankfully, no deaths would be reported at the festival. Approximately three months after Rush's first US concert, John Rutsey would be fired from the band with guitarist Alex Lifeson telling Louder Sound in 2016, we knew early on that John had problems with his health. He had diabetes and he was very concerned about whether it would be manageable for him on the road. We used another drummer, Jerry Fielding, and then John came back for a month of club shows, but that was it for John. We had to fire him. He would end up being replaced by drummer Neil Peart, and Peart would play his first show with Rush almost four months after the Lansing show in August of 1974 in Pittsburgh. Following the failed festival, DeWitt and Meridian Townships would pass new laws to ensure future concerts would be more thoroughly vetted, requiring promoters to provide in detail how they were going to handle garbage, security, safety, water, food, noise, and medical facilities. The promoter, meanwhile, Tom Demeter, would end up declaring bankruptcy following the festival and the next day he famously told the paper, rock concerts are dying out. The drive-in would be closed in 1993 and Demeter would go on to actually have a successful career in marketing, coming up with the Merrill Lynch ad campaign with a bull in a china shop. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. We'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.